everyone, it's Joanne. Happy National Scrapbook Day. Thank you for joining me today. I'm coming to you today for the Hip Kit Club, and we are going to make a double page layout. So if you're interested in that, stay with me, and we're going to make this together. Okay guys, so I have two pieces of white cardstock from the Hip Kit Club and I'm going to use the March 24 kits and this was three sets of metal dies that were available. So I went ahead and cut those so you could see them. The viewfinder die, I love this, so cool. You can use this on any layout and this is what that looks like. And then awesome paintbrush. I love it. And I went ahead and made that. And also this floral cluster. Look how pretty. So I just made the paintbrush and then had that floral cluster come out of the paintbrush. I'm going to put all the measurements and everything below. But I'm also going to tell you what they are, so you can write them down if you want to. But if you just want to scrap along with me, that would be wonderful. And then you can post your layout in the Hip Kit Club Facebook group. I'll link that below as well. And if you do enter this challenge, please tag me. I'll go in and check everything, but tag me so I can know and let me know if you had fun doing this. Okay. So I went ahead and pre-cut the papers just so we could save a little bit of time. Okay. And I'm going to get them all out on the sides they need to go on. All right, let me do one page at a time here. So we are in frame. Okay, this is the left side of the double page, but of course, if you want to switch them, you certainly can. I'm going to utilize my trimmer because in all honesty, I cannot get a piece of paper stuck down straight to save myself. So I like using my trimmer because it has this ledge here so I can push my paper against it. That's just a little trick for you. And this is a border punch from my stash. Just a nice little scallop. I've got five photos that are going on this today. And I am going to go ahead and adhere this to here. Okay, it's just a 12 inch border with some scallops. This is a piece of paper that is six by 12. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and put some, oops, ATG right on this. I want to see this blue side. So then I am going to push this scallop up against this ledge here just so I know it's straight and then I'm going to push this up against the ledge so then I know both pieces of paper are straight. I'm going to go pretty close to the scallop and go ahead and drop that. Okay, I have this adhered down and I left, let me pick this up just a little bit when I trimmed it. So I would have something to adhere to this paper. Again, this is a six by 12. Okay, and I brought it that close to the edge of the scallop. You can put more space in between these two things if you wanted to, totally up to you. Okay, this is the right hand side of the paper and I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down. I'm not gonna put any ATG right here because I wanna tuck that other piece of paper in there. Okay, and this is where the ledge comes from. So I'll just make sure that my cardstock here is straight flush against this. And then you're gonna bring this all the way over to the edge, okay? You can play around with this design. And if you wanted to do it this way, and then the second time you use it, you could leave a little bit of white space here. 
Okay, there we go. See how this is so helpful to get that really, really straight? This is a four by 11 piece of paper, okay? So four by 11. And I am going to tuck this under there right to where I can, underneath the scallops and I cannot see a space in between. I don't want that white space in between. I want to tuck it right up close, okay? But you would leave half an inch here and half an inch here if you wanted to be very specific. And then I'm going to just use my T-square ruler from the top like so. I know that I want it right about there and that is straight. And instead of picking it back up and using ATG, I use glue because then I don't have to pick it back up and try to realign it and get it straight again. So I'm just gonna go underneath with my glue and get the one spot down, hold it for a second so it doesn't move around and slide on me. Okay, nice and straight now. And then I turn my paper so it's easier for me. And then just go underneath and there you go. There's the first side. This I actually cut off from this. So this is a three by 12. So I took this 12 by 12 piece of paper and then I cut this one and then I just cut another three inch strip off it. So I'm going to line these two up and make sure that I have this piece of pattern paper so it matches up with this one and it needs to go in this direction so the lines match. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Okay, and then I know I need to put this this way. So then I will come in with my ATG and put just a little bit on the edge here. Like that. And then I'll get this lined up. I'll try to slide this underneath. Like so. Get that straight. Lean this against that. It's pretty good. I think it went a little crooked on the top here, so I'm going to try to pull on it a little bit. Yeah. Good. Okay, that's perfect. Now I have to remember that it needs to go this way. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and again, glue over here. Just had to get my head straight. I'm not going to put ATG here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and peel this off that I put down because if you just rub it, it comes right back off again. I wanna be able to slide that other piece of paper under there. Okay, now I'm gonna pull that off and put it in the garbage so it doesn't stick to anything. Okay, get my paper flush straight against this ledge. Let me double check my pattern again. Yep, that's the right way. Just to make sure and put this right up against the left edge. And again, if you wanted to make this your own, you could leave a little white space. There's no problem with that at all. Okay guys, I moved the trimmer away. We're gonna do exactly the same thing. This right here is a seven by 11 piece of paper. Okay, and I just thought that these patterns were super pretty because I'm going to be scrapbooking Easter photos of my great nieces and nephew that my niece sent to me. And of course, there are many, many photos from that day, so I want to try to get as many on there as possible. Again, I am sliding this under here, underneath the scale up so I can't see line and I'm doing it as little as possible because I want as much of this pattern paper to show as I can. Okay, I'm going to hold this down with my hand, come in there with some glue and hold it for a second so it doesn't slide around on me. And then come in here on the top and side and do the same thing. Okay, oops, I can't get underneath there. 
All right, looking good. And we didn't put glue on the edge here, so I can go underneath there now that we have this all adhered down and adhere this side just to make sure it stays. Okay, and there we go. Now, next we are going to figure out photo placement. All right, so I want this here and this here. Now see how they are together so it'll look like this in your album. Really cute, right? Yes, I love it. So, so pretty. All right, let me make sure. Yep, I'm in frame with both of these. Let me grab my photo mats. I used two, three pieces of pattern paper. You can do whatever you want with your cardstock. You can use cardstock, pattern paper, whatever you want. We are going to be scrapping five four by six photos, sort of. Let me explain. Okay, so I print, I printed these photos in four by six, okay? But whenever I do that, I always print it with a white border on my printer and then I cut the white border off. So then it would be a little bit smaller than a four by six. So the first pattern paper here is four by six. And then my second pattern paper is 4.3 and 6.3, okay? So just a teeny, teeny bit more than it would go over, okay? And I did pink, yellow, yellow, pink, mix it up a little bit. I basically used the scraps that I had left in my kit. And as long as they match, I think it'll be really cool to have the backgrounds of the photos, the photo mats, not be matchy matchy. Okay. So I'll put one over here like this. I've got two landscape photos and three portrait photos. So I'm going to put these like this. Okay. And just something like that. All right. And then this here and this here. So now we're going to have five photos and I'm going to glue the photos down last because my niece sent me the photos from Easter and they came out really fuzzy. I don't know if it was a translation with the transfer. I asked her to resend them to me. She answered me back so I'm sure she's working on it and then hopefully by the time I'm done with this they'll be in my inbox. Okay guys, I am going to put these landscape photos over to the right hand edge as much as possible. I'm just going to leave a little teeny bit of space right there so I have room for this and some embellishments. And I'll leave, I, I kind of just eyeballed it. You can measure it to be the same space here and here. I'll leave one where it is so I know to do that. I'm only going to put ATG in the middle right here for now in case I want to tuck in any clusters and then if I don't then I will just go ahead and use my glue and adhere it down even further when I'm done okay so the reason I'm going over to the left as much as possible is because I do want to be able to see the scallops on the right hand side I mean excuse me the left hand side right here so I'm thinking right there is about good. Kind of loosely set that down and I'm going to check it this way too. Yes. Okay, now I'll press harder. I like measure um lining things up better this way than this way sometimes. ATG only in the middle for right now. And I'm gonna leave very little space in between these photos here. You can put as much space in between them as you would want to. It's totally up to you. Okay, and I think up just a little bit more. Like that looks good. Okay, and then this one, I'm just going to want centered in between the middle of these two like this. 
And again, you can measure from here to here and here to here to get it, you know, perfectly straight. I don't do that. Just kind of eyeball it. And I'm going to put this back on here. And some on the white, some on the pattern. Does that look about centered? Kind of does to me. And it's straight, and that's what we're going for. Okay, now we're going to embellish, and I've picked out all of these things to decorate this with. So here is the viewfinder metal die, which I love it, and this paper is so cute. I'm just going to tuck it in here a little bit like that bring it almost to the edge and if you don't have the viewfinder metal die just cut yourself a circle or um, use a circle metal die now I'm pretty picky so when I put this in here I don't want this hole from the viewfinder to have half white and half pattern paper maybe you're not as picky as me but that's how I am so I'm gonna hold it down come underneath put some glue, hold it so it doesn't move on me, and I can put more glue later. Okay. And I think I'll take a break in between pages and see if my niece has, has messaged me with the, the new photos, and hopefully it works out really good. And I want to put some tags in here. Aren't these beautiful patterns? So we'll do some tags upside down, but I'm going to cut them so they fit. So this kit came with a whole sheet of tags, which I love. So you have a bunch of tags. Just cut them a little bit. And when I do tags, I like to do one high, one low. It I just think it looks good you can do whatever you want and again I'm very picky I don't in the whole of the tag I don't want half the pattern paper and half the white so I'll just slide it to make sure that it looks good like that and I think I want the pink on top because it's so pretty yeah well let's try the other way just to make sure we'll see which one we like better I actually think I like that better Okay, so I made three of these. One of them is on the paintbrush. And what I did, you guys, is I took a circle punch. Oh, it's in my tray right here. I wanted to show you. It's a tiny little 5 8 inch circle punch. And I punched two circles. I punched one, put a bunch of glue on it, and then got the laid these down the way I want them to be set up and then put some more glue and put another circle on top of it so it would stay all as one big piece instead of putting each leaf in individually that metal die set is so so pretty and then I added for my stash this little punch to 5 8 inch punch with a little butterfly on it and I put two little purple butterflies in on the floral cluster here just because I love little butterflies so I'm wondering if it would look good here and this is really cool because you can take it I think I want it oops what was that oh it's a piece of the tag you can take it and move these around and put them where you want them to be I'm thinking over a little bit more so it's not hitting this tucking it in so I can't see that circle and then I can glue it together how about right there that's so so pretty okay that looks good to me so I'm gonna move everything I'm gonna come in with some glue here like that hold it for a second and I think I'm going to turn this towards myself so I can go underneath and glue without having my arm right in the way. So I'm liking this placement. I'm going to glue just a little bit of these down. I want a lot of them to just be popped up a little bit 
for some added interest and dimension. So let's see here. Nope, that's good. There we go with that. There, that looks good. I'm going to take this little yellow one here to make sure that I glue that down so it doesn't get snagged on anything and rip. All right, I really like that. You guys, that metal die set is wonderful. Yes, it is. Okay, what else do I have, my friends? Okay, I have this floral. There was gorgeous, gorgeous florals in this kit. I'm thinking about putting this over here. They're very large, but that's pretty. So if I do this, I'll have this purple one up on top like that. Yes, I very much like that as well. So now I can go ahead and glue this down there because I think I'm done tucking. And I'm going to have a couple more things that I'm going to add to this, but I'm going to want to do that after I get those photos printed. Photos printed. And I'm thinking foam square there too. So I'll grab one just to keep it popped up a little bit right there. And this is very close to the edge, but I didn't go over because I don't like cutting things on the side. Okay, there we go. So there's that. And I am definitely thinking that we should do some We Are Memory Keepers grommet, those, not grommets, eyelets like this and this will be all set and I might put some more embellishments down like I said but I'm gonna need the photos before I can do that so that's what we have so far it's looking very very cute I like it now I want to think about these fussy cut bunnies from that pattern paper and big surprise, I need a foam square. I'm going to take a long one to go all the way along the back of this little bunny. And take that back off. And I'm going to use my tweezers and see that space right there. I want to cover that up. I'm going to come in with this little bunny. And I'm going to think about this whether or not I actually want that foam square there or not. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think I do. So let me see if I can get that back. I can. I'll put it there just in case I want to use it again. I just think that it looks, it'll look better without it. Okay. Put some glue on the back of that and tuck him in with that, in that spot right there. They're so cute. I love little bunnies. Come on, get in there. Oops. Yeah. Cute. Kind of mangled my paper a little bit there. But it'll be all right. And then there was another bunny. Yes, here he is. That looked like he was jumping. And I was going to put him in there like he's trying to catch up and get with the other bunny. <laughs> I have bunnies in my backyard. They're so adorable. I'll put him on foam and then use that foam. They actually do run around playing with each other. They're crazy. They're like little kittens. Okay. That looks good. Pull him up a little bit here. Like that. A couple little bunnies up there. How adorable. I'm liking this so far. All right. I got my photos. Yay. And I went ahead and printed them. So let's go ahead and stick those down together now. And I will show you on the other side what I mean by printing with a white border and then cutting it down because then it'll just fit perfect. Okay, there's one. So again, these are my great nieces. And my great nephew. Okay, here we go. Hopefully I get this straight. Alright, perfect. And 
then next up, I've got just a couple more pieces of ephemera that I want to add. You never know because I might be adding a lot more stuff. I like to embellish heavily and if you don't, you could literally be done right now. And it's a perfectly beautiful page. I want to show you um, something that I do with the alphabets. This kit had wonderful chipboard phrases. So, oh, I forgot to tell you, when I had the camera turned off, I did shift these photos up like this much because I got to thinking, hey, those chipboard words, let's do that. So here's this word, I'm gonna say love. And what I'll do is stagger them and kind of put them on each other and I'll show you how to do that. So, I'm going to just get the spacing here. That looks about centered like that, I think. Let me see, probably over just a little bit. So once I get this where I know where I want it, um, this chipboard does not come with adhesive, which I love because that adhesive never works anyway. So I just assume put my own on. So I'm going to take the first one and lay it down flat. Okay, I'm not going to press too hard because I put a lot of glue on there and I don't want it to seep out. And then the next one I'm going to put like this, I believe. Let's see about the spacing. And if we like this. Yeah, that's good. So we could make this come over a little bit more. Put that there. And this here. So I'll put the L and the V up higher and flush them right up against the bottom of that photo there. So let me see if I can put some glue on this. I'm going to do these, the two on the bottom first. You just kind of have to think about your spacing first. So I want this here and I want that like that. So I will flush right up against, straight against the photo up here on the top. Okay, give that a second. And now I can come down lower with the E and the O. But in order to do that, you'll need a little bit of foam. And I want those two to be straight with each other on the bottom. And I have a foam square stuck to my T-square ruler, so that was convenient. All right, so I'm thinking, let's get that on there. About right there, right? Yeah, that looks good. So it's hitting the V here and hitting the L here. So I need foam squares here and here. So I'll put my tweezers where I want the foam like that. And then I'll cut some more because I'm going to need it for the E. And then I'll double check before I take the backing off. And I'll want that right. I'll put my tweezers where I want the foam to be, like this. Oops, sorry, loud. And then put that there. And then I have a little peeking through, so I'll just cut that off. Okay, take this off. Take this off. I'm going to put a little bit of glue, but that's going to make it slippery because these are um, shiny. They're not matte. So I don't want it to slip and slide around. Make sure I have this the right way. And again, about right there. Let me peek quick. I think over onto the L a little bit more. Yeah, all right. So I'm only gonna press the foam squares. The glue will dry by itself without me having to press on it and then I won't risk it slipping and sliding. Okay, and then we check here. So we're going to need foam here, here, and here. So we'll go ahead and put some there. Okay, and then a smaller piece for there. And then we're going to have to go, I think, oh, oops, that was not right. All the way across on the bottom, I think. Yeah. Okay, so let me cut another piece of this. 
So I'll just cut a little bit of this off. Hold on to it because knowing my luck, I'd fling it onto my photo. Put that there, and then this piece we'll put, oops, right here. Okay, and then we'll take this off. Like this. I think I put that one on crooked, so I want to make sure. Yep, I can see it just a tiny bit peeking through like this. I'm just going to cut it. Okay, and then I will take my T-square ruler and make sure I'm flush here to the bottom of this O. Hold that. Put a little bit of glue right here. Tweezers. And then... There, like this. Let me just make sure I've got good placement here. Do I like it? I move my ruler so I can see. Hmm. I feel like it needs to come up a little bit more. I wonder why I feel that. Well, it's pretty good. Okay, well, the T square ruler says it's straight. I'm going to have to believe it. Okay, so there's that. Now that I have this, I was thinking how adorable if we use this really cute bow from the ephemera pack and then took another one of the fussy cut bunnies and put it here because it looks like it's looking at her. I feel like these bunnies need an eye because they don't have an eye right now. All right, now I will come in and put glue on the top of that bow since I had the opportunity to slide the bunny in there. And that is my printer. Sorry about the noise. So I'm gonna give him a little eye and a little nose. Probably should have given him a pink nose. Okay, a couple eyelashes, little nose, little eye. I don't know where his eye is supposed to be, but I'm just going to guess. Little eyelashes. And then we'll give this guy a little nose. Give him an eye. Okay. That's better, I think. <laughs> All right, so there's that. We'll put some finishing touches on this at the end. We'll do it all together. So let's move on to page two, you guys. That was really fun. I hope that you're scrapping along with me and you're enjoying this. Okay, this is what I'm talking about when I print a four by six photo with the white border because the first layer of pattern paper is cut to four by six. I print this on with a white border so when I cut the white border off it'll fit perfectly inside of the mat. I'm just trying to line this up. Oops, I think I wasn't straight. And then it'll be all good. And for some reason my printer does not print the white border correctly. Which is very odd. I don't know why it does that, but I hardly ever use it anyways, so, okay, let's see here, okay, okay, that came out good, so, I'll go ahead and get rid of these, so, this is Ella, Lily, Landon, and Easton. Okay, so I want this photo to be on the outside because she's facing that way. And this one, she's kind of just looking forward. So I'll go ahead and get these on the photo mats. And I don't think I'm going to... Oh my goodness, I just dropped that. I don't think I'm going to tuck anything with these. I'm not sure. Get these down straight, hopefully. 
and then we'll go ahead and decorate this side so again don't forget to check out the hip kit club facebook group so you can enter play along with the festivities for national scrapbook day i took day off from work on Friday so I would have the whole weekend to scrapbook isn't that fun so what I'm gonna do here is slide this underneath this and I move this and I want to see <clears throat> excuse me I'm gonna line this up and again this one is smaller than these but I'm thinking maybe I think that I'll have the bottoms line up with one another. I'll check it out and see if I like it. So I only have to do one. So that looks about right. I'll put some ATG just a little tiny bit in the middle. Oh, I must have scratched my paper. Good thing we're covering that up. Okay, there's that. All right, so that's done. Now we can move this back out of the way. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, I do like that. All right, now we'll get this back. And then I want to check the spacing on this before I start gluing that down. I'm going to put another one of the viewfinders, and I want to cover up that circle. Again, I want to try to get this, and I don't know how I'm going to do it, so, okay, I like that. I just don't want the holes in that to have half white and half pattern paper, so I'll do that. That's pretty. All right, let's just go ahead and see how we want to do this. All right, so I have all these things picked out. I'm going to do a couple tags again over here are these beautiful papers I had to use this yellow tag with the hearts on it um, we'll put this one underneath how did we do it on the other side yeah we did the same thing so the one that's longer on the outside and the one that's shorter on the inside I'll straighten those up and this is where this awesome paintbrush and florals come into play we'll put this over here and again, I don't want this space like that. So I'm going to tuck this in close so I don't have like that, if you see what I'm talking about. And then just glue it right about here. And I can move these. I can glue them down so they're not going off the page. And I don't mind if some of them are up onto the photo a little bit. So this is good placement, so I still have room for this paintbrush. And then I think I might even want it to be up a little bit further so some of the florals are going onto that viewfinder. I really like this. So there. That's super pretty too. I'm not sure which one I want to use now. I don't know. Okay, let's get this in. I'm going to have the paintbrush over here, so I was thinking about tucking this up here in this. Maybe over to the left a little bit so some of it is on this photo and this photo. Let me see. I could take my tweezers and come in and just grab this leaf like that. Oh. Oh, okay, pretty. I'll leave that there for a minute. I have another bunny. I was wanting to put it over here because it was facing this way, but it's hitting her hand and I don't like that. So I think I'll put them here. We'll leave that there for a minute. Okay, and then Get this here and I'm definitely thinking that if some of the florals were up onto the viewfinder it would connect them all and the paintbrush wouldn't just be floating 
around in midair by itself. And then I can just take this and scooch it and glue it right there, like that. And then, oh, maybe I want to put this on foam. And I will put these three on foam too, like I did on the other side. But I'm not going to make you watch that, so I'll be right back. Okay, guys, this is all glued down now. And I put a rub on floral over here. And I've used the alphas from this kit. I love them. This green's beautiful, soft, puffy, super soft. I love those. And I just put Easter around the circle here. And I did decide that I'm going to go ahead and do the floral because I think it needs it and I love florals. So let's put this like that maybe up a little bit more here, I think. I'm not sure. Hmm. That doesn't look too bad. Or do I want it this way? I think I liked it better up like this. So we'll just tuck it in right there and put some glue and I've got a foam square prepared on the back of my hand for right there. And I can put extra foam squares where needed off camera at the end. I usually go through after I'm done with the layout and foam square and put extra glue and stuff like that. Okay, that's good. Then I do have this one bunny left. I think I'm going to put him up here somewhere because he's so adorable. But then I'm thinking, let's look through these puffies. Super cute florals, hearts, buttons, some words. Let's do this one. And then maybe it won't interfere so much with that. That's better. Okay, put that down. Got this little guy on a foam square, of course. Just going to layer him right up here. This. That's good. And then I need my pen because he needs a little nose. And a little eye and some eyelashes. Doesn't need to be perfect when you do this either. Just makes it look more like an eye if you put little eyelashes on it. <laughs> okay, that is so cute. They have little bows around their neck. I love it. All right, I have sentiment strips. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I also have these epoxies. There's hearts and circles. These would be just like doing enamel dots, so I might do that. Oops, I got something on my paper. But I want to put something here because my rub-on got messed up. So maybe if I put an orange heart in the middle of that, it'll camouflage the mess up. I should do a different color. How about yellow? Because this yellow flower right there. And then that will camouflage my rub-on. I got snagged on something, so some of it rubbed off before I put it on the paper. But I still wanted to use it because these rub-ons that came with this kit are so spectacular. Let's put some of these up here as enamel dots. We'll put purple, mm, blue, because we have lots of blue in this layout. And what else do we have? We have orange, yellow, and green. Let's do a yellow. Yeah. Pretty. All right, I'm probably going to sprinkle some more of these around too. So let's put some over here. Maybe right here. Let's just use up what we have. I've used a lot of this kit. These kits go so far, you can get so much done with them. It's wonderful. And then I guess we'll do a green one here. Goes good with the green leaves. Alright. I'm liking that. And I ripped my paper right there a little bit. So I'm thinking about maybe talking something in there. I'm not sure what. Let's look at this. Alright, 
So this might look good. And this. Oops. Oh, maybe that pink heart will look good somewhere too. <laughs> it just kind of popped off, so might as well see if we can use it. Here, maybe. Something on it. I'm going to try it. It's not bad. I think it's kind of randomly by itself, so I might have to put something with that. Get this little piece out of that word. And go ahead and get rid of that. So I'm just going to hover. I was wondering, because they're making colored eggs, and I'm liking that blue popping. But this is also live in color. And that fits there well. But I'm really liking the pop of this blue. And it looks cute. So we'll put that there. Yeah. All right, what can I do with this heart? Maybe I can get it somewhere on the other side. I'll put that in the back of my hand. Maybe that too. All right, I think I'm done with this. Or, yeah. All right, so I might use some of those on the other side. Do I have room for any more of these? I'm wondering if I can get a puppy in there. Let's see if I can get this purple one in here to make it look like an extension of this. Why not? All right, here's another purple one. Just trying to get some more purple on here. Mm, maybe not so much. Put that there. Maybe we can do a yellow. Just to fill in that space a little bit, I think. That looks cute. Stick those down good. Oops, something on my photo. All right, um, then we have, oh, what about these? Hmm. These are awesome. I'm gonna go for this one because it's blue. I'll just put this up here on top of the photo because there's tons of free space. Why not? All right, maybe we could put a heart there though. That might be adorable. Let me see. I just want to use things. I do. Maybe blue. All right, I don't mind that. Okay, um, I can put cute heart up here too. Maybe. It's too big. Let's do a tiny one right there. Guys, I think this is almost done. Alright, it also came with these. Mm, I don't know where I could put something. I like this. I also like this. And I like this. I don't know. Maybe I can get this in here. Too similar of a color. That's cute. Alright. Let me see how I can get this in here. Don't want it on the photo. Do that. Oh, I like it. Okay. I think we're done with this side. I really do, but I'm thinking let's do three hearts. Just because. Let's get this one over here and see what we can do. We definitely need to put some of these over here because we put them on the other side. Don't really want anything here. How about let's put a heart here? Let's get some of these 
shapes like they're enamel dots. And what else do I have? I'm going to have to do, I think a green one. Yeah, let's do green. And then we'll get this blue or orange. I think orange. All right, I've only got two left. I don't know how that happened. But they might actually look good here. No, they don't. I don't think so. We can put, um, let's put two here and then we'll include a heart with it so it's still three. And then we'll just do another, we'll do a pink heart. Maybe this. Um. Mm, it's okay. It's too big. I'm going to put it there just so I can use it. And then maybe I can put this under here. Like that. And then we just won't use this one. I feel like I need to get a puppy over here because I got a puppy on the other side. So, wait, is this where we can use this? I don't see why not. Unless we put it on this side so it's not so close to that. Or we could put it right here. Okay, I'm loving that. Let's get one of these in here like we did on the other side. That's a really pretty pink one. Lift this up. Okay. Um, all right, so let's put a title on this like we did the other side. And it goes with this. So we can put this here. Okay, here we go with both of them next to each other. Please leave me a comment. Let me know if you like this and if you're going to try it. And again, head over to the Hip Cake Club Facebook group and enter to win some prizes for National Scrapbook Day. I'll put close-ups at the end. Don't hesitate to ask me any questions if you have any, okay? Thank you so much. Happy National International Scrapbook Day, everyone. Have a good time scrapbooking.